What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the Booking Not Happy Show. Today is February 5th, Monday. A quick recap, we did not have a good day yesterday. As I always say, I am as transparent as anybody out there. And I'm going to tell you guys what we did. Went one and three yesterday. Our only win was the Quinnipiac. That game covered easily. Lost the under in the Tulane game. Pretty disgusting beat. Uh, Tulane was up seven with like a minute and a half left. The under was easily going to hit. And uh, they gave up a bunch of points at the end. They did not foul when they were up three like they should have. That game went into overtime and we lost. We were just on the wrong side on the Providence game. Not even going to lie to you guys. And uh, Illinois was up 10 with about a minute left. And Nebraska came back to go to overtime in that game. And we obviously did not cover there. So one and three yesterday. Let's hope for a better day today. If this is your first time here, welcome to the Bookie Not Happy Show. What we like to do is to try to give out $40. I will select somebody randomly uh, from the comments. If we sweep this card, all you need to do to qualify for the 40 bucks is number one, subscribe to the channel. Hit that subscribe button right now. Number two, comment below four and oh, give us the good vibes that we need. And number three, like the video. And if and when we sweep, I will select somebody. I'll cash app you 40 bucks. All right. With that being said, let's jump into today's plays. The first play we're looking at is going to be this. Miami at Virginia game. Current line is Virginia favored by six. Total points is 132 and a half. And we are taking a total here. Let's jump into it. Looking at this uh, Virginia against Miami game. Virginia is coming off a one point win over Clemson most recently, while Miami beat Virginia Tech most recently. Miami, you know, had a bad first half in that game, uh, but they had a really dominant second half scoring 56 points to beat that Virginia Tech team. They had uh, they were led by Norchard Omier and Kaishan George. They both had 16. That's two of their best players on the year. This team's averaging 80.8 points per game, which is 29th in the country. Uh, they can definitely score it, especially when they get hot. Um, defensively, they're allowing 72.2 points per game, which is 162 in the country. Um, they've done a pretty good job of not giving up a whole lot of points down low. Uh, but when opponents are you know really able to get inside, they've had success against this team. Miami's holding their opponents to under 33% from the three-point line this year. Keep that in mind as we dig deeper into this game. They, uh, This is a team that has you know four players in double figures. We mentioned Omir. He's averaging almost 18 points a game. But Nigel Pack, Matthew Cleveland, and Wooger Poplar all average over 14 a game for this team. On the other side, looking at this Virginia team, only three – I'm sorry, two players in double figures led by Reese Beckman – at 13.3 points per game, and Isaac McNeely averaging 11.7 points per game. Okay, our play here is going to be to take the under, okay? Virginia, only allowing 57.8 points per game, which is second in the entire country. Pace of play is going to be huge in this game. I'm a big believer that the home team is usually able to dictate a lot of the pace. Uh, Virginia likes to play at a so slow pace. That's going to really help them out here. Um, according to Ken Palm, Virginia's defense is ranked number 12 in adjusted efficiency, 13 and two point percentage defensively, and number two, I'm sorry, 22 in turnover percentage. Miami has good guard play. Uh, offense is ranked 189 in turnover percentage. Um, so that's going to be our first play. Give us the under in this Miami at Virginia game. I think this is pay, played at a slow pace. And Virginia games typically, you know, do go under. Looking at some recent trends here, as far as the over-under analysis goes, uh, in the last 12 games at home for Virginia, the under has hit eight out of the 12 games. On the road for Miami, we mentioned that they have some, you know, potential offensively. However, they struggle to hit this over on the road, okay? Only going over three out of nine games on the road this year. Six out of nine times, they've gone under. So I like kind of where both of these teams are at as far as where they're playing at and hitting the under is going to be our first play of the day. Give us under 132 and a half. All right, moving on to our second play now. We're looking at this Eastern Washington at Portland State game. Portland State, 14 and eight on the year, five and four in the Big Sky Conference, going against Eastern Washington, who's leading the conference at eight and one in conference, 14 and eight overall. The Vikings are coming on into this game with a three-game winning streak. Most recently, they beat Sacramento State 58-51. Um, meanwhile, Eastern Washington, they won their last game against Montana 
winning 78 to 65. Okay. After losing their first game of the season, uh, Eastern Washington came back with a, you know, good victory over a very solid Montana team. Um, this past Saturday, they were led by Jake Kyman. He had 21 points. Um, the top scorer for Eastern Washington is Cedric Coward, who's averaging almost 14 points per game. Um, and he also has 20 blocks, 22 steals, and leads them in rebounding with 148 rebounds on the year. Ethan Price is their second leading scorer, averaging 12 a game, and he's their leading assist guy with 46 assists on the year. Meanwhile, on the other side, looking at this Portland State team, uh, we mentioned they were able to win against Sac State, 58-51. Um, you know, their best player is K.J. Allen. I believe he was uh, one of the stars of that, that show that they did. He's averaging 11.7 points per game, also leads them in rebounds, got 136 on the year. Other good players for them are Bobby Harvey. He's a good three-point shooter. Hayden Curtis is a good player inside that leads them in blocks. Our play here is going to be to take Eastern Washington here. All right. When you look at some of these numbers, you know, current line, Eastern Washington favored by five and a half. But I really think that this comes down to, you know, a, a better scoring team. Okay. Eastern Washington averaging 76.2 points per game. Meanwhile, Portland State averaging 69.1. Eastern Washington is the better team. Um, you know, they've both won recently, but Eastern Washington's leading this conference. Okay. They've been on a roll all season. I mentioned 14 and five um, against the spread. I don't know if I did mention that, but that is what they are against the spread. 14, five and one. Portland State. 10 and nine against the spread and at home this year, only three and three. Okay. So we're, we're taking the best team here. Only five and a half points. I like Eastern Washington. Uh, they also shoot it a lot better than this team. As far as efficiency stats go, 56.2% uh, effective field goal percentage compared to only 47.3 for Portland state. I think this is a down year for Portland state. I don't really care a whole lot that they're at home. Give us Eastern Washington here. Minus five and a half at Portland State as our second play of the day. All right, moving on now. One of the uh, smaller conferences looking at this Texas A&M Commerce at McNeese State. Currently McNeese State favored by 17 and a half. Okay, I believe this game opened at like 18, 18 and a half. We're getting a little better number than before. Uh, let's dig into both of these teams now. Texas A&M Com Commerce recently beat Incarnate Word. Um, and then lost to Northwestern State. Uh, they are averaging 71.9 points per game on 42.4% shooting, giving up 73.1 and giving up 44.6% shooting. They are led by Kalen Williams. He's averaging 14.7 and three assists. And Jerome Brewer Jr. is averaging 14 and about four and a half rebounds. Okay. On the other side, McNeese State, you know, you talk about them the best team in that conference, one of the best mid-majors in the country, but they did most recently lose to Southeastern Louisiana. On the year, this team's averaging 80 points on 49% shooting. They're only giving up 62 points and 38.8 as far as defending goes. I've mentioned him before, Shahada Wells. He's their leader, averaging 18 points, almost five rebounds, and Christian Shoemate is averaging 12.6 for them. Their third leading scorer is DJ Richards Jr., um, and uh, this team, you know, I mentioned that they are one of the best mid-majors in the country. They're coming off a loss, and I, I like it. I think it's going to be kind of a wake-up call for this team. Texas A&M Commerce, one of the worst shooting teams in the country. Um, you know, as far as points per game, this team's only averaging 65.2, ranking them 328 in the country. Um, and shooting-wise as well, three-point shooting, 28.6% is Commerce. 343 in the country and you know McNeese State does a really good job defending the three as well ranking 271 in the country you know I think three-point shooting is very important on the road you have to be able to shoot from the outside you're not going to get as many calls at the rim Commerce does not have the guys to do it McNeese State's going to be really upset after their loss I don't think they're really in play right now for an at-large but you know, if you are uh, Will Wade, you're you're still talking to your players about getting an at large and uh, trying to motivate them and telling them that this is a game. You know, you got to win, obviously. So I, I think they're going to come in here with some, uh, you know, chip on their back after the loss. Give us McNeese State to cover this 
17 and a half points against Texas A&M Commerce. All right, moving on to our last play of the day. We're going to look at this Morgan State at NC Central. NC Central favored by eight points. Okay, let's dig in now to both teams. Looking at Morgan State first, uh, 7-15 and 15 record after they most recently beat uh, South Carolina State by two, 72 to 70. This team scoring 72.7 points per game, 45.2% shooting, but they give up 81.5 points. Okay. They're fifth in the conference at a three and three record. On the other side, NC Central, um, they're coming into this game 13 and eight overall. Uh, most recently beat Coppin State at home by 31 points, 77 to 46. Okay. This is a team that can really score offensively, averaging 77.6 points per game, 44.7% shooting, only giving up 69.1. All right. ATS-wise, I like, you know, what I'm seeing as well. Both of these teams are pretty good as of late. They're both 4-1 and one in their last five. But when you dig deeper, Morgan State on the road, 6-7-1, Meanwhile, at home for NC Central, they are four and one. In their last 10, NC Central is seven and one. So I, I think that, you know, as I mentioned, they're both doing pretty well against the spread. But when you look at who's at home, who's away, NC Central has a good advantage in that regard. Looking at some efficiency numbers now, okay, uh, you know, NC Central is the better team but they're really dominant when it comes to the defensive efficiency stats, leading them in seven out of the eight main efficiency stats. Okay, opponent effective field goal percentage, NC Central holds their opponents to 47.8. Morgan State gives up 54% to their opponents. It's not going to be good when they are on the road here. Um, neither of these teams are great from three, right around 30%. Um, but I think that's a big factor. Defensively, NC Central is a lot stronger. They defensive rebound it better, 68.4 compared to 63.2. It's going to give some offensive rebounds for NC Central when they do miss. And uh, as I mentioned, ATS-wise, NC Central is a good team at home. Morgan State, not so much on the road. So that'll be our fourth and final play. Give us NC Central minus eight against Morgan State. That's going to wrap it up for us today. As I mentioned at the beginning, if you'd like to qualify for the 40 bucks, all you need to do, number one, subscribe to the channel. Number two, comment below 4-0. and oh. And number three, like the video. If and when we sweep, I'll select somebody randomly. I'll cash up you 40 bucks. As always, our motto on this channel is to make your bookie not happy. Tough one yesterday. Let's get the bounce back today, guys.